Hey guys, it's the Villaman here, home theater enthusiast and lover of all things tech. So when I review TVs or even newer receivers, especially the 2020 models, I often have to mention some technical terms which not everyone may understand. And as much as I try to minimize it, there are still times when I have to throw them around to get a point across. So in this video, we'll be going over what a bunch of them actually are and if there's something you should care about when buying or researching your next TV. Stick around. So the first thing we'll be talking about and what could possibly be called the harbinger of a lot of these changes is HDMI, High Definition Multimedia Interface, and specifically HDMI 2.1. Now you may know that you use the HDMI port to connect your devices to your TV, but what you may not know is that there have been different versions over the years. Now this is an all digital connection and was meant to combine digital audio and video and transmit them securely from a source device to another. This also allowed for the two-way transmission of audio from say your receiver to the TV and vice versa through the audio return channel or ARC. Now since this is a digital connection, there was a maximum data bandwidth defined in the specs. For HDMI 1.4, the first version to include support for 4K up to 30 frames per second, the max bandwidth was 10.2 gigabits per second, of which a little over 8 was dedicated to video. That was all the way back in 2009. Do you even remember what kind of TV you had back then? Yeah, they were laying the groundwork, but fast forward 10 years later and we have HDMI 2.1. That's the newest version which first started being introduced in new TVs as of 2019. Now HDMI 2.1 has support for up to 48 gigabits per second, of which a little over 42 gigabits per second is dedicated to video and has support for new display technologies also. It can support up to 10K resolution at 120 Hertz, which is insane, but to do that, it uses display stream compression which is exactly as it sounds. It compresses the video portion of the signal by a factor of three, so a three to one compression to achieve that. But there is a caveat. The downside is it'll be a lower quality 420 chroma as opposed to the 444 that you'd get if the video was anything up to 8K at 50 hertz stream, which doesn't need display stream compression. Also, let's explain hertz because that may be unclear to some of you and we may need it going forward. No, we will need it going forward. So hertz is a frequency that something happens every second. It's similar to saying 60 frames per second, but hertz is the standard measurement for how often a display refreshes the screen so keep that in mind because we'll be needing that later and it will be on the test. Alright, so now you know the background on HDMI versions, so let's talk about the other features of HDMI 2.1 beyond just data rates. There are some new features specifically for gaming and audio that make it a game changer. The first of which is VRR. Now VRR is a feature of HDMI 2.1 that's built for gaming and it allows the TV's refresh rate, which we just discussed, to vary based on the frame rate of the game being played on your device. If you game, you've probably experienced tearing or stuttering. This can happen when the TV is ready to display a frame since it typically has a constant refresh rate in Hertz, but the console isn't finished rendering it. So for example, the TV's refresh rate is 60 Hertz, then it'll be expecting 60 frames per second. And if things get really crazy on screen and it gets say 58 because the console is having such a hard time rendering the scene, then the TV will have to repeat the last frame it got until it gets a new one which leads to stuttering or the console sends only a partial frame leading to screen tearing. What VRR does is it tells the TV, hey, slow your roll, the frame you want isn't ready yet, all right? Which then allows the TV to switch from say 60 hertz refresh rate to something lower like 58 in this example to match the input resulting in a smoother overall experience. Now FreeSync is AMD's proprietary version of this technology while G-Sync is Nvidia's version. And since the Xbox One X and the next gen consoles will all have AMD graphics chips, then there's a good chance that they may support 
FreeSync also. Especially since the One X already does support it. If you're gaming on PC, then there's a high likelihood that G-Sync will be most likely your speed, but they're all forms of what's called Adaptive Sync, which is leagues better than the old V-Sync, which you may have heard of. V-Sync just limits the frames of your device output to the refresh rate of your display. So if your PC is a monster and could run a game at say, you know, 200 frames per second, then your TV will be like, I don't care, man. 60 frames per second is what I want and 60 frames per second is what I'll get. Now, unlike VRR, you may have heard that there are tiers to FreeSync because who doesn't like to pay more to unlock features, huh? There's plain vanilla FreeSync, which provides adaptive refresh rate sans HDR, and then there's FreeSync Premium, which enables HDR on TVs, and FreeSync Premium Pro, which is for PC monitors. Thankfully, in 2020, TVs that support FreeSync, like the LG C10 OLEDs and above, and the Samsung Q70T QLEDs and above, support the Premium version. Unlike VSync, which limits your device output to the refresh rate of your display, these adaptive sync technologies like VRR, FreeSync, and G-Sync allows your monitor to adjust its own refresh rate based on what it's receiving. So it's only really useful when the frame rate is lower than the refresh rate of your display. Now typically VRR will only work on a specific range on the display. So for a 120 hertz TV, it could say support VRR from a range of 40 hertz to 120 hertz. So I bet you're wondering, what happens to a 30 frames per second game? Well, below the VRR range, LFC comes into play because the two technologies are essentially two sides of the same coin. LFC stands for low frame rate compensation and what it does is it basically multiplies the current frame rate by a factor which brings it above the minimum VRR range. And to put that in plain English, it essentially displays the same frame multiple times. So say you have a game which dips to 25 frames per second, which is below the 40 hertz VRR minimum. It would then multiply the frame by a factor of say two, which would bring it up to 50 frames per second, which falls within that VRR range. And once again, Bob is your uncle. ALLM or Auto Low Latency Mode is a pretty quick explain. It allows the TV to switch to game mode when it receives a game signal, or if you whisper to it softly enough. But your luck with that might vary. That brings us to QFT, Quick Frame Transport. This increases the priority of frames being transferred across devices. So the transmission process doesn't add any additional lag. So say you have your console connected to a receiver, which then in turn connects to your TV and they all support the feature, then all these devices will prioritize getting all those frames to your eyeballs no detours. There's also another feature called QMS or quick media switching. And what this does is it essentially eliminates that black screen you see when you switch input sources. The black screen can be caused by anything from say a change in display resolutions, frame rates, or even HDMI handshaking. That's the thing of the past. Poof. And finally, we get to EARC or Enhanced Audio Return Channel, which I am in fact a big fan of. I mentioned in the beginning how the creation of the HDMI port resulted in the combining of the audio and video signals into one and the ARC was implemented so that the TV could also send audio over the HDMI port to an AV receiver. It would send a compressed audio signal over HDMI assuming that the specific uh, HDMI port that the receiver was connected to is actually ARC capable because that's typically on reserve for only one port. But the audio transmitted over ARC was based on Dolby Digital, a compressed audio codec which was intended for streaming services as it has a lower bandwidth requirement. With EARC though, your TV can send the uncompressed audio stream based on Dolby True HD through the HDMI cable to your receiver. It being uncompressed has a higher bit rate and higher sample rate and an overall better quality. If you want to learn more about the differences between compressed and uncompressed audio then I did a comparison a while back back when I had even less hair. 
Now, I don't think that any one of these technologies by themselves is an absolute game changer when it comes to gaming, but all of them combined, I think, will lead to a much smoother and enjoyable gaming experience. Well, I hope my explanations were helpful and that you at least learned something. And let me know in the comments if you want to see more of these types of videos. And don't forget to like the video if you liked it and subscribe if you haven't for more comparisons, reviews, and demos. You know, my thing. Thanks for watching and until next time, this has been your friendly neighborhood villa man saying, be safe and peace.